Hello everyone. This is a video tutorial to start beginning to use Twine. Uh, Twine is an open source tool for telling interactive nonlinear stories. This just means if you remember when you used to read those choose your own adventure books, it's just a way you can make uh, very similar ideas in the web. You can make games, you can make stories, you can make quizzes. Just the idea of kind of letting the user choose their own path is a kind of main focus of Twine. You can go to twinery.org to start using Twine. You don't have to download anything, but if you want, you can put it on Windows, Mac, or Linux. You can download and have it the exact same kind of software on your computer. If you don't want to commit to it right away, you can just use it online. In terms of what I'm using, I prefer using Google Chrome just because uh, in terms of the browsers, I found that if you have a Mac, especially and you're using Safari, later on when you're downloading your story to send it to other people, there's a little bit of an issue uh, with Safari, how you it kind of compresses it, the HTML, HTML file. So I suggest using Chrome if you are just, you know, open to any browser. So uh, let's use it online. You're greeted by the kind of first tutorial page. So let's say, tell me more. And then he says, if you're new, you never used Twine before, you can go to Twine Guide and click through it and has some ideas and some kind of basic tutorials. You can save this page. It's a good idea to keep a lot of resources open. Uh, what I suggest as you go for these lessons and these tutorials, whatever you want to call them, you can start saving in a Google Doc and a Word Doc and the notes, just little codes that you like to use, just so you don't have to remember you have quick access to it. A lot of people kind of do that. Uh, if you used Twine before, then, you know, get to it. Your work is saved only in your browser, so make sure that you are always saving and keeping track of your work. I always suggest that you back it up by directly saving it to your computer. Uh, so let's get to it. So this is what the Twine page will look like if you're brand new to it. I went on incognito just so that it looks like a brand new page. Uh, my on the web browser has multiple stories already there from different people and my own myself. So I wanted to kind of show you what the blank one looks like. So for, for now, it's start. Let's, you know, start a new story. New story. What are you going to call it? I'm just going to call it uh, Mr. Cardona's Adventure. And there you go. You got a new story. If you click on the house here, it goes back to the beginning. And that's your story so far. Uh, in terms of the passage, the rocket here uh, is to indicate where your story will begin. So I can click on it. My adventures will usually begin with me waking up. If you backspace, it shows you some ideas of what you can start typing. So it kind of a mini tutorial, if you will. So I can just start typing. I woke up in the morning. And then here is the kind of side for, or the main function of Twine, which is choosing options. Uh, if you do the square bracket twice to open up a option, I can say, wake up, double bracket, close that path. Or I can, you know, stay in bed. That's my two options. If I close this, I will see that Twine made two options, one called wake up and one called stay in bed. Uh, if I were to play this, how it looks like is I woke up in the morning and then the options are in blue, wake up, stay in bed. If I click on wake up, it goes to a blank page because there's nothing there yet. If I click stay in bed, it goes to a blank page again, nothing there yet. So I wake up, what do I do? I usually, I head to the washroom and later we'll go to the kitchen. Uh, now I'm in the kitchen. In the kitchen, I will make myself a, and then you can choose. Again, double racket. I can say a egg sandwich, or I can say just toast, nothing fancy. Again, close, I have two more paths. And then depending on how you want to organize, you can move the boxes around. Uh, depending on what kind of story you're trying to make, it might be structured a little bit differently. So you're already kind of beginning to quote unquote code here because you're adding in your new structures. Uh, something that you can also do is you can also go to different um, or the same area again. So I can say stay in bed. I can say, actually, I have to go to work. So I'm going to go 
wake up. Again, open brackets, close brackets. And you can see here by the arrows, it goes to the wake up. So I can either go directly wake up or kind of have a little detour, but it takes me back to where I was. The main, main issue is if I spell this differently, so let's say I put capital, you know, instead, that's a whole new passage. So you have to be very careful of how you're spelling things in these passages. Wake up with lowercase w, wake up with uppercase w is a different passage altogether. Uh, if I play this game as it is right now, if I wake up, egg sandwich, if I stay in bed and click this wake up, there's no other option. So it is a different path entirely. So you have to be very careful when you are doing these choices. Uh, a common kind of issue that people that are starting out when making twine do is they make really large passage choices. So they say, I woke up, sorry, I wake up. Let's say I go to the kitchen and they go, what will I eat today? The issue of making this option here, a new passage, is now you have a really long sentence that you have to type every single time if you want to recall to it. So if I wanted to go from toast to this step here, now I have a really big sentence I have to retype and I have to type it exactly as it is. What will I eat today? Or else I will go to a different passage if I misspell it, if I do a typo, if I do an uppercase where it was a lowercase. So long passages are usually not advisable. So what you can do instead, so let's say I'm here in the wake up, I wanna fix this up, so I'm gonna just delete this, delete it. It's not gonna like that because it's going to nowhere, but I'm gonna change it anyway. So I'm gonna say square brackets again. What will I do today? If I go shift, Usually above the enter key on the right side of your keyboard, there's a straight line and I go option one, close brackets. What happens now is the path is called option one. However, if I am the user and I'm playing the game, stay in bed, wake up. Oh, this is a different one. Stay in bed, wake up. What will I do today? So the user, the player, will see the first part of the text. They'll see what will I do today. You as the person designing the game and coding the game will see option one instead. So that's an easier way to one, <clears throat> keep track of the options. So again, option one might be simpler to type and remember every single time. As well, you can do kind of sneaky things. Uh, with a player where they think they're clicking one option, but they're actually going somewhere else. So let's say over here, instead of toast, I will change this to something else. I can go yummy toast, but actually it is salad, which I don't like to eat, especially in the morning. So now when the player is going through the passage here, they will see the option egg sandwich toast yummy toast but again because I didn't go on the play mode I went on this test mode and I'll talk about that in a second it shows me that I'm actually going to a passage called salad um, so what I mean by test mode and play mode at the bottom here we have test and play if you click play that's exactly how the user sees the game if you click on test you have this kind of debug on the side here and when you hover above the options, it kind of reads it out what it means. So if I go to wake up, egg sandwich takes me to egg sandwich, toast takes me to toast, but yummy toast, it kind of spoils the surprise. It actually takes me to salad instead. So you have now an idea of play, the test, how to make passages, some good um, formatting. So you don't want to make the passages too long and as well as how to kind of hide or change the direction of the story by having this straight line down that takes you to a different option instead. So that's kind of the beginning ideas that had that you have. Again, if you click hover over the passage, you have the delete, the edit. So every time you want to go into the passage, you have to click the edit. Uh, you can have the test story starting from here. So instead of 
if you're playing a really long game and you want to test a specific passage, if you click play, you'll also you'll always automatically start where the green rocket is at the beginning. So if you want to just test it from a specific spot, you might just hit that instead. And there's a uh, more passage options as well. Uh, you can go start story here. So if I click that, now the rocket has changed. The story will always begin here. So that's something you can do. Uh, if I go on the sides here, wide, tall, and large. So depending on how uh, what you want to look at, how important the passage is, you might change the size for your own organization. Uh, initially, you're probably going to keep them all small. And then as you kind of get more comfortable, you might change sizes and so on and so forth to adjust that to your liking. So that's kind of the first video. Uh, right now, you have a simple story where you can write anything you want. And you're able to take two different avenues and start creating a story with the ability as well to put that straight line and have uh, an option that takes you somewhere else where the player is reading something different instead. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.